Midjourney just released a new image editor that lets you upload and edit external images for the first time. The new editor includes familiar features like repainting and reframing, but also introduces an exciting retexture feature that can transform the style of your images while preserving the core structure. I have a lot of examples to share today, so let's get started. First, let's talk about access. Midjourney's announcement states that the new image editor is available to people who have generated at least 10,000 images, those who have yearly memberships, and those who have been monthly subscribers for the last 12 consecutive months. They are starting with a limited release because they're testing a new moderation system in the editor and don't want to overwhelm the system or the team. The image editor is only available on the website. If you have access, you'll see the edit button over on the left. First, we'll start with the edit tab. To bring in your external image, you can either click edit from URL and paste your image URL, or simply upload your image by clicking or dragging and dropping it here. And a quick side note, you can edit your existing Midjourney images in both the original image editor and this new editor. I'll explain the difference between the two later in the video. For now, we'll focus on editing external images in the new editor. If you've used the original image editor that came out a couple of months ago, the edit tab functionality will look familiar. We can erase, move and resize the image and change the aspect ratio. Erase is selected by default and you can click and drag this slider to adjust the brush size. So I've erased the area above this guy's head because I want to add a hat. Up in the imagine bar, I'll type photo of a man in a coffee shop wearing a yellow hat. I could just type yellow hat, but I prefer to add context. Midjourney will use this prompt to fill in the empty space. You can also try the suggest prompt button for prompt ideas. I believe this is using an older version of Midjourney's describe feature. I'll stick with my original prompt. And before submitting your image editor job, check your settings to make sure that you're using the most recent model. Right now it's version 6.1. You can either set it as your default or add dash dash v 6.1 to your prompt. Click Submit and the image editor jobs will appear in this panel on the right. This first image is our starting or base image and here are the results. Clicking on the base image shows you the exact image that was submitted with the prompt. Let's try this again. I'm not going to change anything about the image but I will edit the prompt text to say red instead of yellow and submit that. Over on the right, I get another grid of four images and this time he's wearing a red hat. Let's go back and try something different though. So I clicked here to go back to that base image, then clicked reset. This time I'm going to zoom out a little by dragging the scale slider. You can also click on move slash resize up here, click and drag the corners of the image to resize or click and drag to reposition. I also want a different aspect ratio. I can either choose one of the preset aspect ratios down here or click and drag on these little gray bars. I'll make a taller image and put him slightly off center. The current aspect ratio is displayed down here, which is helpful. And I'll simplify the prompt to photo of a man in a coffee shop and click submit. On the right, you'll notice a new section for these results since we're working with a different base image, right? I zoomed out and I changed the aspect ratio. So Midjourney is working with a different version of that original image. You can scroll through these results and clicking any result lets you edit it further, making iteration pretty seamless. So that covers the basic functionality of the edit tab. If you want to start fresh with a new image, just click new. But what happens to our results over here? Images that you create within the new image editor will not automatically show up in your organize page. To save one of these images to your organize page, you need to click upscale to gallery. This will run a subtle upscale and add it to your main gallery. There's also a download button here. All of these results actually go into a separate image editor gallery, which you can view by clicking view all. The right panel over here shows the same filtering options as your gallery on the organize page. But while you'll see things like your familiar folders, these folders actually start off as empty in the image editor gallery because regular Midjourney images and the image editor images don't share the same space, if that makes sense. So you'll have the same folder structure, but the images that you see in a folder will depend on if you're on your organize page or on the image editor gallery. To download multiple images, just click and drag or shift click to select them, then hit download. 
Clicking on any individual image takes you back into the image editor where you can continue working on it. So obviously it can be a lot of fun editing external images with Midjourney, whether you want to dress up your favorite pet or make that new professional looking profile image. Before we move on to retexturing, I wanted to share another use case with the edit tab specifically, and that is with product mockups. The new editor allows you to upload PNG files with transparency. I uploaded this PNG of a woman wearing a shirt with some Halloween characters that I created with Midjourney. First, I resized and repositioned the image. Then I typed photo of a woman standing in bright sunlight and submitted that. And I submitted another one to place a cafe in the background. And here are some of the results. Not too bad. You can take this a step further by erasing and replacing the face of the person and either add a character reference to your prompt or let Midjourney decide. So if you have PNG images that you wanna use in different product mockups, try bringing them into the image editor. I also tried this with a coffee mug and it worked okay, but one thing that you have to be careful of is that Midjourney has to blend the shape of the object into the rest of the image. With something like a mug, it might not be obvious to Midjourney that the bottom of the mug is the bottom of the mug. I also tried a notebook and some of the pages came out a little wonky, but for a lot of things, it should work pretty well. All right, let's talk about my favorite new feature and that is retexture. I'm going to start with a new image and go to the retexture tab. Retexture sort of acts like an image filter by changing the look of the image while adhering to the core structure of the image. You'll see that we don't have any buttons or sliders on the left besides our export options. Retexture uses your input prompt up here. Let's say I wanna convert this to a sketch drawing. I'll type pencil sketch drawing of a cow and click submit. And here are my results. As I flip through these, you can see that the core structure of the image, such as the shape and placement of the cow is the same, but there are some details that are a little different. The eyes, nostrils, and coat pattern on the body all differ just a little. Retexture is creating new images, so you will notice some changes in details. Let's submit a couple more. I'll do a 3D render of a cow and a watercolor. And of course, you can click on any of these results and go over to the Edit tab if you want to start building a new image using one of these as a base. If you love using style references, you need to try them with retexture because the results can be pretty incredible. Here, I retextured the cow image with a few of my recent favorite SREF codes and got these results. These SREF codes are all available in my SREF PDF guides. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. Here's another example where I uploaded an illustration of a woman and retextured using SREF codes. I kept my prompt simple and then added each SREF code. And one more, I tried this image of the alphabet and created all of these different stylized versions using SREF codes. So retexturing with style references is a great combination. Let's go through some more examples. How about remodeling a living room? First, upload a photo of your living room, then describe a specific style, or keep it simple with something like bright modern living room. In these results, you can see that we have the same basic room structure and furniture placement as the input image, but the styles have changed. If you have a specific color palette in mind, include that in your prompt and see what Midjourney comes up with. Or if you wanna see completely different furniture layouts, go back to the edit tab, erase the furniture and submit a prompt. You can try this with pictures of any room, but you can also use home exterior images to explore different designs. Use retexture to prompt for different color palettes, siding, stonework, or driveway texture, or head over to the edit tab and erase the front lawn if you wanna try out landscaping ideas. Retexture can also be used to change lighting in a scene. I'll show you using a photo of a person and we'll try hazy purple lighting. And here are the results. Remember, some of the details will change when you use retexture, we have the same pose and similar clothing, but when you look at the hairstyles and faces, these mostly look like different people. If you're working with an image of a specific person or you've uploaded a selfie and you don't want the features to change as much, you can try using that input image as a character reference. So for example, I'll just click and drag my original image over to the prompt and then click the little character icon and run this again. The results do look more similar to the character reference. 
It might not always work perfectly, but it's something that you can try. On a related character reference note, if you struggle with prompting for character poses, using an image reference at the beginning of your prompt is one way to help with this, but now that you can upload external images, you could upload a pose reference and use a combination of edit and retexture to swap out the face, change clothing, and modify the style of the image. It might take a bit more effort to get a coherent looking image, but it is a possible workflow to try out. Luckily, the character reference feature will get an overhaul when Midjourney's V7 model comes out in the next couple of months, so things can only get better. And for anyone who has ever wanted to see one of their drawings come to life, try using edit and retexture. I drew this beautiful little sketch, took a picture of it with my phone, cropped it and uploaded it to Midjourney. Then I used retexture with several different SREF codes to bring it to life. Here's another one. This is an older drawing of mine from when I was actually trying to make something cool. The details are pretty intricate and you can see that Midjourney doesn't capture all of the details with retexture, but it keeps the core structure of the image. And lastly, this is an image that I made many years ago with a program called Apophysis that lets you create fractal images. This was a really fun one to retexture with different SREF codes. So if you have a napkin doodle, a full on fashion sketch, or a scene from a story that you're putting together, upload it to the image editor and see what you can turn it into. So everything that I've just shared was using the new image editor, but you can still use the original image editor by opening your Midjourney generated image and clicking on editor. This hasn't gone away. This is the editor that came out a couple of months ago and everyone has access to it. But now if you also have access to the new editor, you'll see this button, open in full editor, which will bring your Midjourney generated image into the new image editor where you'll have access to the regular editing features as well as retexturing. Having two editors that have slightly different purposes and different workflows makes for easy confusion. So I wanted to try to provide some clarification. The original editor, let's call it the basic editor, everyone has access to, can only be used with mid-journey generated images and the results will end up in your organize page. The new image editor or full editor allows for upload of external images, has the retexture feature, but the jobs show up in an image editor gallery and not on your organize page, unless you click upscale to gallery. I don't know if these editors will be combined someday, but hopefully it will eventually be less confusing to talk about. Overall, I am loving the new image editor and I think there are a lot of great use cases for things that previously weren't possible with Midjourney. The retexture feature is a lot of fun to play with and I do find anecdotally that it seems to work best with simpler scenes and can sometimes fail spectacularly with more complex scenes. Let me know what your experience has been so far. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining the Patreon community where I share monthly prompt collections and mid-journey guides. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.